Hey. Why don't you welcome yourselves over to the Wolf Den Podcast? How you guys doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing just fine. Will is on his phone. Oh, I'm I'm more than on my phone, Bob. I am redeeming the Pampers Rewards code that we get with every white package or diaper package of uh, Pampers that we buy. You put the code in and you get a whole five effing cents back. Is that like the points you'd get on the inside of a Coke bottle or the points you'd get on a fun-sized bag of Doritos? Uh, and you can, you, can, you can redeem it for like an inflatable chair. Is it like uh, that? Actually, yes, it's exactly like that, except you redeem it for like diapers and uh, whatchamacallit, uh, gift cards to Target, you know, not fun stuff. So no inflatable chair. No That's inflatable chair. Saying. Although you could theoretically use the Target gift card to buy an inflatable chair. You don't have to use it on diapers. Okay. All right. But uh yeah, this is that's you know, that's my life. How so wait, is your it, life? Is it every diaper gives you five cents? No, every every white package gives you five cents. Every diaper sleeve, and there's like, you know, at least, you know, twenty diapers in a sleeve, that gives you like forty cents. Okay, that's stupid. <laughs> yeah, no, the math doesn't make sense. It's all dumb. It's just a scam to get parents to buy only Pampers diapers, but it works. They got me. It friggin' works. Well, anyway, I'm doing fine. I <laughs> use my Amazon reward points to buy a new lens. It is very expensive. Nice. Mind focus. Uh, nope. Okay. Uh, anyway. It's been it's been a week, boys. It's been very hot. It's been a very hot it time. It sure has. Uh, who do we got here that we have to thank? We have to thank Screamy Yelly Gamer for the twenty six months, loving the streams and YouTube. Keep up the awesome stuff. Thanks, dude. We got Ackmeister with twelve months, one year. Uh, Omedito, Omedito, congratulations. Thank you. Congratula congratulating yourself. Uh, Anderson, thank you for the seven months. In a world like Toy Story, which of Will's action figures would be able to brew the best coffee for Bob? Hmm. I don't know. I don't. I'm trying. Now, that's a very good question. I feel like Superman would, would probably know how to brew a decent cup of black coffee. No, Batman would know how to brew the most basic black coffee necessary. I would say Who's gonna who's gonna make a latte though? Probably well, Spider Man would order a latte. Yes. I would say Nightwing would probably know how to make a latte. Yeah, like I would a good that's one. a good that's yeah. a good point. Nightwing or Batgirl would What about the Flash? Isn't he a chemist? Yes. Well, he's a forensic chemist. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess he could. But he doesn't really need it. He's True. Trash. Does it really fuck him up <laughs> if, he has, if he has caffeine? <laughs> it might. <laughs> I am drinking a uh, dirty chai latte iced that I made, put in a wine bottle and I put a little too much uh, spice in it. It's It's got like cinnamon and shit in it this the, the stuff you put in a chai is just pumpkin spice so i put pumpkin spice in here i just didn't want to say pumpkin spice because it makes it sound like that's the flavor but it's not well it's also it's uh july you're you're very early for pumpkin i know spice. but it's just it's the spices you, you you use nutmeg ginger cinnamon and all that shit for a for a chai so i just but that's all in pumpkin spice so i just use that right anyway uh, Tech Nano, thanks for 100 bits. Redeem your poopy points now. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of things to talk about today. Uh, number one on the docket, we have to talk about Nintendo buying an animation studio, which I didn't think was that big of a deal, but Will tends to disagree. I, th I think this is a potentially big deal, and we'll get into it when we get to the topic. Uh, we also got to talk about Bayonetta 3. You could see her butt. Uh, Mario Sunshine is 20 years old. Will's favorite Mario game. Uh, 3DS <laughs> and Wii U eShop. There's a little update on that. Somebody in the chat before asked uh, if there were any good uh, 3DS eShop games they should get before it shuts down. Kind of a good idea for a topic. We'll put a pin in that. Yeah. Though. 
Uh, Mario Strikers gets DLC. Uh, Genesis Mini 2 is confirmed that I already pre-ordered it. Uh, and a whole bunch of other crap. There's so much crap. There's a lot of crap here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but first, let's talk about Nintendo buying an animation studio. What happened? Yes. Uh, you said it. What an animation studio? Nintendo has entered an agreement to acquire CG animation company Dynamo Pictures in order to develop visual content using Nintendo IP. The gaming company is buying 100% of outstanding shares of Dynamo Pictures and rebranding it as Nintendo Pictures Co. Limited. Uh, the deal is expected to close on October 3rd. According to the regulatory filing, Nintendo stated, Nintendo has decided to acquire 100% of the outstanding shares, excluding treasury shares, of Dynamo Pictures and make it a wholly owned subsidiary to strengthen the planning and production structure of visual content in the Nintendo group. The deal suggests that Nintendo is expanding further into the entertainment business. Having a studio gives Nintendo the freedom to produce its own content. While it is unsure whether the production company will develop full-length features, in-game cutscenes, or short films, it's exciting to think about all the possibilities. Nintendo owns franchises such as Mario, Kerber, Legend <laughs> of Zelda Guy, Donkey Kong, Starbox, and Ag Agamal Krogbing. <laughs> Nailed it. The company is mm -hmm. already working with Universal's Illumination Studios to release an animated movie in, in April 2023 based on the Super Mario Brothers franchise. The strategy of video game companies developing film and television series content based on IP isn't new. Sony, responsible for PlayStation, is also developing titles with its library of video game IPs. Projects already in development include Twisted Metal, The Last of Us, and uh, Ghost of Tsushima. There are 10 others in development. Uh, the visual production company Dynamo Pictures Inc. was established in 2011 and is best known for animation for the animated Pikmin short films, as well as oh. Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex 2045 Season Two, Death Stranding, Monster Hunter World, uh, Final Fantasy 13 2, Persona 5, Yuri on Ice, and Earwig and the Witch, and more. Ooh, there were Pikmin short films. Yes. Uh, and not included in this article, but I feel worth mentioning. Uh, Dynamo Pictures were responsible for all the uh, the short films and cutscenes for Metroid Other M, aka the best parts of Metroid Other M. Right. Wait. So. Okay. Who did so the cuts? Cut Who did the Luigi's Mansion had great cutscenes. Yes. <laughs> That was developed by Level Five, I believe. Yes, and I or think next they, level. Next level. Next level is the right one. They also did Mario Strikers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which was not a good game, but it had great animations. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I thought they worked on Other M. No, uh, Other M was a collaboration between Nintendo Team Ninja. And uh, Dynamo Pictures. I did not know that. Dynamo, that is very Dynamo cool. Pictures handled not like the in-game cutscenes, but like the super fancy action-packed cutscenes that like everybody really likes from that game. That was them. That's awesome. So I yeah. didn't know that. I thought this animation studio really had nothing to do with Nintendo. <laughs> I thought it was just... <laughs> so this is a weird thing. It, so uh, in a world where all of these game companies are buying up developers... Nintendo hasn't really been doing that. They no. haven't been buying develop like Microsoft's buying up everybody to to, to have yeah. exclusives. Sony isn't is buying up a few. They, what was the last big purchase they did? Well, the the deal to buy Bungie just was approved, so now okay. they now own Bungie. That was the most recent one. Uh, and, Sony actually, I forgot uh, who they bought, but they just bought like an esports company because they're trying to expand more into esports. Right. So they all have different. Acquisition strategies is what I'm trying the, to say. The, the thing with Nintendo is they have such close relationships with their like second party studios that they don't feel the need to to buy them up unless they're like struggling financially. <laughs> yeah. So it is a little strange to buy up an animation studio. Uh, so Kate in the chat asked why would they do this now and why wouldn't they do this when they were going to make the the Mario movie. And I'm thinking 
what happens with Nintendo all the time is they partner with somebody, they get their their dirty, grubby hands all over it, realize they're not going to work well with this person, and then they have to scrap the whole project. So what they're probably realizing is they need to own an animation studio so that they can <laughs> have have their grubby hands on it from the very beginning. Yeah, I, I would go along those lines. I would, um, you know, offer a slight tweak to that hypothesis. I think they like making movies. They mm-hmm. they're enjoying their experience with Illumination so far, but for future projects, they want to be in total control. Mm-hmm. So that's why they're going out and getting an animation studio, and not just to make like movies and short films, which would be like you know the big thing, but also to handle like a lot of their uh, video game cutscenes and animatics, uh, and also um, motion capture because uh, Dynamo owns a motion capture studio. Yeah, I. Uh, this doesn't necessarily need to be a movies or TV thing. This could just mm-hmm. be. This could just be a. Uh, they want to up their animation in, in their regular games. Uh, they're yeah. not, you know, Nintendo isn't exactly like the most graphically savvy company. <laughs> yeah, uh, I will say though, uh, Nintendo has had a history of uh, not working well with movie or TV. They. <laughs> Most pretty recently, they had a uh, the the rumored uh, Zelda Netflix series that yes. uh, got canceled because uh, probably because Nintendo had all their hands on it and 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 didn't like what they were seeing. I I thought that was canceled because the news leaked and Nintendo's like we can't do this anymore. I that's People definitely about it. That's definitely part of it. I think it had trouble yeah. from the very beginning. Uh, Probably. I, I think it would be a lot easier for Nintendo to get stuff like that out there if they just did everything in-house, if they had their own yeah. situation. But no one knows why, why they actually bought this studio. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo works in mysterious ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're, they're, we've, we've seen them make tr- try to gr- expand the characters that they have already. We've seen mm-hmm. Mario in in movie in a movie already, <laughs> yeah. Which I think they also a Mar- had a lot of insight on and and ruined the development of that too when that came out. That the nineties. No, Mario they actually movie. they that the, the opposite was true. They had very little to do uh, with the making of that movie. That was almost entirely done by the studio and the several writers and directors that they were hired to try to finish that movie. Oh, so maybe that yeah. was to its detriment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but they also tried to do the Zelda thing that didn't seem to work out. They got Donkey Kong, they got Star Fox, they got Animal Crossing, and 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 mm-hmm. these IPs are worth so much, and they're just sitting there. They they could be uh, taken outside yeah. of video games. I mean, they have a theme park. I'm trying they to get do. Donkey Kong <laughs> in the theme park game right now. Uh, and I mean, there have been examples of uh Nintendo property showing up. In like movies and TV, we said Mario Brothers, of course, but there was also the uh, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show and its various mm-hmm. incarnations, the Legend of Zelda animated series. You know, '90s kids might remember the meme. Excuse me, princess. Oh yes, that's on a T-shirt. Um, <laughs> there was the Donkey Kong CGI animated series. There was a French like cartoon. It's very weird. Look it up. Uh, I don't there was know a why animated series and of and a what's the F zero animated series from Four Kids TV back in the early two thousands. I don't know why the Donkey Kong one sticks out in my mind the most. You would I would think that the Mario one would have been more popular, but for some reason I think the Donkey Kong one was was. I don't want to say more popular, it but it might have been. Like I, that one was most prominent in my head. The Donkey Kong one was more recent. That was like, you know, in the 21st century. Mm-hmm. And I think because it was so recent and because like it was much more easily transferable to the internet at that point, people just like flooded the internet with like weird memes and like videos and gifs of it. So I think that might be why it's more prominently you know, out there in the zeitgeist, at I, least I, in I, internet culture. Whereas Super Mario Brothers Super Show, like, yeah, that's probably more famous in the long run, but it's not as easily accessible. I think I was just the perfect age for the Donkey Kong show. Like that was Maybe. around when I was the age where I will remember it forever. 
The the Kirby one, uh, not so much. The Kirby one, I I I remember, but but not nearly as much as the Donkey Kong one. That was uh, Kirby right back at you. Oh, that was pretty good. I remember it being good. Yeah. Mario and Zelda ones, no, I was I was too young for that. I think. Yeah. Uh, the Donkey Kong that was Country... before. That was before Sonic, right? Yeah. Donkey no. Kong Country, the TV show, first aired in France in September of ninety six. Why French? And it was it was made by a French production company. Oh, when did it come to America then? Maybe it never did. It came this to is Canada all... in ninety seven. <laughs> this is all just in our heads. Maybe no, it came to America. But when? So what North you're saying America... is we're gonna get a new Donkey Kong show? Yeah, <laughs> that's what this is all about. Uh, basically. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting, though, that Nintendo would buy an animation studio predominantly known for making movies and pretty, you know, high, high quality, high profile movies at that. Earwig and the Witch was a Studio Ghibli film. It was their first CGI movie. So what did they do? What did they do on Persona 5? Uh, probably, like I said, they probably, you know, probably motion capture. For a person. Their website is entirely in Japanese, so oh, I can't luck. read it. So they just I didn't think they were that big of a company. I thought they were a little little tiny guys. The Pikmin yeah. anime is short from what I saw. I didn't want to play it because I didn't want to get a uh, cease and desist, but it looked pretty good. Yeah. I, it might just be Japanese. They, they might not have released it for Pro- that, that us makes sense. people. But they, it does have English oh, auto-generated captions. Never mind. Uh, when was this? This was in 2020. Wow. Uh, so it looks like they do really good stuff. The interesting part is that they yeah. straight up renamed it to Nintendo Pictures. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like, they're they're putting their name on it and they're calling it Nintendo Pictures. Calling it so Nintendo they're... Pictures makes it seem like they want to be in the movies game. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. This is their way of saying like. This is us breaking into the movie industry, Full which is stop. which is bizarre. Considering it's before the Mario movie came out, we don't even know if that's going to be good. But I guess if that's bad, yeah. like they could blame it on the fact that it wasn't their studio, and then they exactly. could just do it again or do a Zelda He's one. Or like, something. yeah, if you if you don't like that, don't worry, we got you know the Metroid movie coming or something. Right, right, right. So I think uh, uh, only good things can come of, of of this little acquisition that they did here. Yeah, uh, I, I I'm surprised that Nintendo bought anything. They don't usually buy stuff. They usually just have good relationships yeah. with people. But uh, this will be interesting to see what comes of that. It's probably gonna be a long time until something does, though. Oh, definitely. We're not gonna see. I mean, we might see like a short or like a trailer within like mm-hmm. by next year or something. But in terms of like a full length feature. Maybe like three or four years until then, right? Because when was the when was the Super Mario Brothers movie announced? Like three years ago, a long time ago, yeah, yeah. And we that's coming out this uh, next Christmas, year. It's right? coming out April. No, it's coming out in April. Oh, uh, they delayed it. Yeah, I think. Yeah, they delayed. Remember Miyamoto tweeted. Yes, I do. And now it's all coming back to me. <laughs> This is Miyamoto. We are delaying the Super Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's that. Uh, thank you, Jeffrey Sorensen, for the 17 months. Haven't been able to join you guys live in a few weeks, but I've caught up on YouTube later in the week. Glad to be back. Well, glad to have you back, Jeffrey yeah. Sorensen. Uh, Adam Maps, thank you for the three months. How you doing? Uh, anyway. Boop. What's next? Uh, oh, let's talk about Bayonetta's ass. Yes. Well, we got a release date confirmed, and then we got news about a censorship mode. Oh, oh get to the good stuff. 
All right. Alongside the October 28th release date announcement, developer Platinum Games has revealed that a family-friendly mode will be available in Bayonetta 3. The series is known for being a little risque, but as Platinum tweeted below, uh, the naive angel mode will make some slightly explicit scenes a bit more appropriate for all ages. The post included a demonstration video, but it basically just covers Bayonetta up with more clothing. By turning it on, you can play right in the living room without having to worry about what's on the screen, we think. <laughs> says uh nintendo has finally revealed the release date for the long awaited bayonetta 3 announcing it will arrive on october 28th for nintendo switch the lengthy new trailer below um oh. ended with the october release date that will mark almost five years since the game was officially announced back in december of 2017 brand new gameplay also revealed in the trailer shows off bayonetta's transformations and plenty of fast-paced fighting uh the series and platinum games as a whole is known for Clips from several cutscenes were also featured, revealing new characters, plot points, uh, and plot points fans can expect to see in Bayonetta 3. Despite causing some fans to worry, uh, following a number of no-shows at E3 or similar events, the game reappeared last year when Platinum said it is progressing well. So, uh, this was dropped on Twitter. It was not in a direct or anything. Uh, yes. Just like the Kirby thing was. We talked about the Kirby thing mm -hmm. last week, right? So uh, you said it looked oh, like Fall yeah, Guys. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Kirby Fall Guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's two. That's two game drops outside of an Nintendo yeah. Direct so far. Uh, I think part. I think a little. I a little piece of me thinks this wasn't in a direct or anything because her ass is in it, and that's like an important part of the of the announcement. I don't know. I feel like, like we've said on the show before, they probably had to do that partner showcase a while ago. Right, they had contracts right. and like deals and stuff. But Bayonetta is a Nintendo published property now. Uh, Kirby is Nintendo owned property. So my feeling is instead of putting together a full direct for them, they had to do it for their partners. But for things they own, they're going to drop information whenever they can. Uh, and the easiest way for them to do that is just to tweet about it. Right. Yeah, I'm not opposed to them tweeting about it at all. Yeah. I, I, I just, I've never, I've never seen an ass in a Nintendo Direct. <laughs> and I was looking at this naive angel mode, and one of them, I had a, I had a, I had a look a few times, mm -hmm. uh, because it's, it has a little slider. It says like on and off like if it's off you're gonna see butts if it's on you're not gonna yeah. see butts um which is usually the opposite but this one they showed the slider and i was like this one didn't change anything it's it's like a it's like a b person but it's her boobs her boobs yeah. are a lot more boobs a lot more boobs when it's off yeah but this wasn't in the trailer. Her butt was in the trailer. That's it. The naive angel yeah. mode like showcase was not part of the trailer. No, that was a separate thing they announced later. But this, I mean, there's nothing wrong showing a butt in no. the, the Nintendo Direct in Japan. In America, people might be like, whoa, cover your eyes. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Nintendo, they're for kids. Exactly. What is this? We need Congress to ban video games because it'll turn children into school shooters i thought i would... saw a butt <sighs> yeah like parents might have an issue with that but isn't this game yeah. uh we got a rating for it too didn't we well the past two games have been rated m for mature i think I'm this one this got confirmed that it is game. yeah which is very strange for a nintendo owned uh property <laughs> uh, uh i mean the whole like Anytime there's like a censorship mode, people get like their knickers in a twist, ironically, because it's like, why would they do that? But it's optional. You don't have to play with it on. Play with it off. Most people are going to play with it off. Even kids are going to play with it off. <laughs> so it's just relax. Do worry about it, something it's, else. I like how they, how they phrased it. It's really so yeah. that you can play it in your living room without having to worry yeah. about what's on screen. Uh, this is clearly for, uh, you know, people with wives and kids and shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> so they, just so they don't have to explain themselves to anybody while yeah, they're playing exactly. in, in in the family room 
Not like all the other weird crap in a Bayonetta game is going to be easy to explain, you know? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, but it looks really good. The game looks good otherwise. It does. Uh, it does look very good. Uh, I like all the different characters you got. You got the Hot Topic Manager. You got uh, uh, this long-haired guy. You got, like, two different Bayonettas. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, I will give it a try when it comes out on October 28th. That's so long from now, though. Uh, I mean, it's been in development. Like, they announced the team. Like, so the fact that it's only like a few months away, that's good news. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, there was a point in time when I thought uh, it wasn't going to come out or it was having a lot of trouble. <laughs> I think it was earlier in the year. Like when they when we just finally yeah. got some new news about it. Uh, anyway, do you know what yesterday was, Will? It was it yesterday uh, or today? Monday? Was it today? Yeah, today's the tw- the nineteenth. Oh, because yes. Japan. I saw it from Famitsu uh, first. Famitsu said today was the twentieth anniversary of Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, and they were in the future at the time. So today, <laughs> now, today. is actually the 20th anniversary of Super Mario Sunshine. Now, Will, you have a fonder memory than me. Uh, I remember this game being really good and really enjoying it. Right. And then I played it more recently, and it's not that great. Uh, <laughs> but how do you remember it? Uh, because you haven't played it more recently. I remember playing. Well, I played it when the All Star Collection came out. Oh, well, I actually played more of that than I did Galaxy and Mario sixty four. I remember when it came out, liking it, Mm -hmm. but felt like something was off about it. Mostly because you had to use the the water pack, the flood, and playing it twenty years later. That hasn't changed. Like, I enjoyed playing it, but something still felt off about it. And I think now it's just the fact that it's dated. Now, like, that we've, yeah. you know, 20 years later, we've had better Mario games that, like, handle better and just better platformers in general that handle better. Uh, it's It could have benefited from better camera control, you know, tighter, con- tighter movement controls, better jumping. Uh, better controller layouts because it's you had to transfer it over from a GameCube controller and it didn't really translate all that well to a pro controller. Um, I think Mario Sunshine is a good but flawed uh, 3D Mario game, but I think it taught Nintendo a lot on what they can and can't do with 3D Mario game. Okay. I, I, I would argue that it controls fine it's uh the the levels are designed poorly some of them are are some i mean look it's the worst 3d mario game but that doesn't mean it's a bad game i still think it's a good game i think that it just has some uh uh mission design and some levels that are uh designed a little poorly i think yeah largely it's pretty good though um that being said, I do think that the flood is is a little stupid. Uh, it's fun for like a little bit, but like I don't. At the time, I thought this, and I think this now. I don't like when they give Mario a gimmick, and then that's the whole game. They did that with yeah. Odyssey, and Odyssey is phenomenal, and Cappy is really right. fun and 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 cool to use. But you don't need to do that. You could just yeah, have Cap- a Mario game. Yeah, that's the thing. Like they just made a Mario game that also happens to have a new power up. Yeah, but, but he doesn't like, need that. No, exactly. Like you can you can complete a lot of that game without Cappy. Right. Uh, Sunshine is almost entirely based on the flood to the point where they set the whole damn thing on a tropical island to really hammer that home. Right. Um, to be fair, the water effects in that game, well, Chef's Kiss. Like to this Very day, good. they're phenomenal. But it just goes to show you where their head was. At the time, it wasn't in necessarily making Super Mario 64 2. It was more in making something wacky. And I think that backfired on them. 
Yeah, I, I mean, the, the Nintendo's whole thing is is trying to innovate where they don't need to. Like, like yeah. they're always trying to uh, do something weird and wacky. That and, and a lot of the times they'll do that and it'll surprise us. We'll be like, "Oh my god, this is incredible! I didn't know we needed something like this." Like the Wii, we didn't, yeah. we got that, and we're like, "Motion controls? That can't possibly be good." And then they were good, and and we had a lot of fun. Um, and no one ever would have expected Mario to have this additional thing, like a like a water jetpack thing. Like like yeah. that would have never that didn't make sense to us, but to them they were like, "This is exactly what Mario's been missing." <laughs> Yeah, it, it's to the point where like a lot of people, when they look back on this game, they'll say the best parts of this game uh, are the levels where they take the flood away from you. Yeah, and you just have to do like regular ass platforming in like these this weird subspace area, um, and that eventually became you know the basis for Galaxy and parts of Odyssey. But I would argue that those le- parts were too fucking hard to be in a Mario <laughs> game. There was a really lot of difficult. weird difficulty in in Mario yeah. Sunshine. Yeah. Uh, you know, but and the worst part about it is those part. You know, you collect stars because it's always stars in that game, and mm-hmm. a lot of the stars you had to collect in those subspace platforming areas. Yeah, I again, I think the game controlled fine. Uh, I think at the time it was revolutionary. I'm pretty sure yeah. it was the first third person platformer that used the right stick as a camera. Right. Uh, and it's part of the reason why uh, Sonic Adventure 2 was immediately dated after it came out. <laughs> because yeah. I think I played this first. No, no, no. I remember liking Sonic Adventure 2 a lot when it came out. Maybe I played it on Dreamcast first, like at a friend's house or something. But yeah. uh, we definitely played Sunshine first before Battle. If I have my maybe thoughts right. Uh, but yeah, when I when I always had the idea that Sunshine was good and and people are are blowing the the the, the difficulty out of proportion. But then I went and I replayed it, and I was like, "No, nah, this game, something's a little off with this game. It's not, it's not like the other Mario games." Well, that also, the GameCube was a era was a weird era for Nintendo because they, you know, they were in last place. They were they were entering that generation behind Sony already. They were in mm-hmm. a distant second place, and then all, all of a sudden Microsoft comes in, and now they're in a distant third place, and. <laughs> People did not want a GameCube because it was purple and it looked like a lunchbox and Nintendo games were for kids. And yet Nintendo was trying everything they could to just make a good game, regardless of, you know, age appropriateness. They made uh, Wind Waker, one of the best Zelda games ever made. Oh, it's cell shaded. It's for babies. It's stupid. I want to play Halo. They made the Mario game that, you know, takes place on a beach and has a lot of water. And look, Sunshine got good reviews at the time. Oh, but it's stupid. I want to play Grand Theft Auto instead. You know, every time Nintendo tried to do something uh, with their game franchises, the audience wasn't there at the time because they were busy looking at what Microsoft was doing or especially looking at what Sony was doing with PlayStation. And I think like that hurt them a lot to the point where, you know, I mean, Metroid was a success. So that was like the one. But we still haven't gotten an F Zero since the GameCube. We still haven't gotten another Wave Race or 1080 snowboarding since the GameCube. Yeah, Zelda went right back to looking realistic after Wind Waker. Mario ditched the flood and went right back to 3D straight 3D platforming with Galaxy. So I think you know I think the circumstances of its release had a lot to do with how people looked at Sunshine then and now. Yeah. Do you remember what you considered to what, what, did you remember anything that you struggled with in the game? Any particular parts that were difficult? Definitely the 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 parts where they took the flood away. I remember right. that being I, I remember that being challenging. Well, there were parts Batman with the especially. flood that were pretty difficult also. Yeah, no, there definitely were. Um you have the ability to hover with flood. Right. But especially in the beginning, uh, your hover time is shockingly low and your hover height 
is often not high enough to do anything you need to do. Well, I think so, that's by design because they want you to platform. You know, if 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 if, if yeah. you just hovered everywhere, you it would be overpowered. Well, also, you'd just too, be hovering like, everywhere. You level you you can level up the flood so you can go higher and farther, but it takes so long to do that. Can you? That, uh, yeah, you can. You just do no. It's just a different nozzle. No, you can upgrade flood so that your hovering can take you higher and farther. I thought it was just the rocket. You just put the rocket on it. No, the rocket is another upgrade in addition to making you go higher and farther. I don't remember the higher right? and farther thing. Chat, help me out. I here. don't think I don't think so. I don't remember that at all. Because I remember playing it recent when I played it recently, like I was like barely hovering off the ground. And like I'm seeing like clips online, like these people are like, you know, really high up in the air. Like, why can't I do that? Maybe you just weren't holding it right. <laughs> I don't know. Because like I'm pretty sure it was just the same height the whole like the highest you go. That's the height because there's certain things that you are just out of reach, and I'm pretty sure that yeah. was by design for the most part, except for the, the the when you get the rocket nozzle. Yeah. Uh, but I what I was trying to get at was the pachinko level. I was waiting for you to say the pachinko level. Oh, I just spoiled the ending of the game. I never got to the pachinko level. I never got that far in the game. So yeah, this wasn't. Uh, I don't know if it was like at the end of the game, but uh, it, it was op. It was completely optional. You didn't have to do the pachinko okay. level. But this is the hard one of the hardest things in any video game to exist. Uh, <laughs> just you have to get the coins that are in the this yeah. pachinko machine, and you're a little Mario in the pachinko machine. Uh, and you use the rocket nozzle or the regular. I think you get to choose the rocket nozzle or the regular nozzle. Uh, and for some reason, I chose the rocket nozzle at first, which is probably a bad idea. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, you switch. You switch off between the two. Um, yeah. It's absolutely fucking impossible to, to, to navigate through it. And it's glitched right in the middle coin. It's glitched in a way where you can get... you If you hit it any way other than perfect, you can get shot off to the side. So uh, not only is it just really hard to navigate, it's also glitched and 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 broken. So right. uh immensely frustrating. And I, I I can't mention Sunshine without mentioning the Pachinko level. Uh, but it's just a mini game. It's optional. You don't have to do it. But you have to right. do it if you want to get uh all the all the all yeah. the shine spreads. Now I have a hundred percent of this thing. Right. You know, and I don't think I don't think you're going to do a deal about this game. I no, I'm not going back to this. I, I refuse. I frequently consider playing Odyssey again because I really liked that. Yeah, uh, but I got 99 moons and I was like, I don't want to ever play. It. <laughs> I don't want to have to do that again. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, I do think that Sunshine gets a little bit of a bad rap. I think it's a good game. Uh, I just think it's the worst of the franchise. And the franchise happens to be really, really good. <laughs> yeah, that's the so. thing. Like the worst, the, the worst Mario game is still better than most other games in the genre. So. Right. It's not a bad, not a bad game by any means. It's just know what you get yourself into. Anyway, so go give it a try. It's friggin' twenty eighth anniversary. You can uh, still get it on your Switch yeah. if you buy it physically from Amazon. Yes. Uh, Otherwise, track down a GameCube. Yes. Good luck. Yeah. I saw a Game Boy Advance player, a Japanese one, which will not work. Mm -hmm on an American GameCube. I saw it for $300 in a store. Really? Yeah. Was it orange? It may have been. Did I take a picture of that it? That might be why, because I think the orange uh, GBA player was exclusive in Japan, and it's not as common as the oh, other colors. I didn't So the Game Boy... The Game Boy Advance player itself Oh, I did. It is orange. Is yeah. The it's 350. Itself, the player itself is actually region free. Mm. So that'll work. The disc is what's region locked. 
So if you buy right, that, right. if you buy that player, not for three hundred dollars, but that that should work in an, in an American GameCube. It's the disc that's region locked. It's three hundred and fifty dollars. But the disc is the the disc is the thing. The disc is. Right. I mean that I didn't know that orange was the exclusive Japanese color, but the disc yeah. is usually what's expensive, yeah. and uh, really? that's the th- that I think the disc is more common in Japan than it would be here. Right. I also think in Japan they released GBA players in every color of the GameCube, whereas mm-hmm. here they only did like black or silver. Right. So we have a black one. Yeah, so it's probably how, how do we get that? I don't know. We got it years later. Because I need a And we didn't have the disc. You you, yeah. you did the action replay hack. Yeah. Yeah, and I need a disc. I want a disc now. But the, the thing dollars. is though, like if you if you look at any video talking about the GBA player, they'll tell you the disc the disc that came with it actually outputs terrible video quality. And all the action replay hacks are actually better picture quality than the original disc. See, here's my problem though. The action replay hack that I have has mm-hmm. three different uh, video players on it and they all play at a different frame rate. <laughs> so I was hoping that if I got the Game Boy player, it would, the, the, like the official disc, it would play at the native uh, frame rate of the GameCube. Right. I don't care what the actual games play at, if that makes sense. Think about taking a 24 frame per second video and putting it in a 60 frame per second premiere timeline. Right. I want the timeline to be the native resolution of the GameCube. Okay. The game that's playing, I don't give a shit what frame rate that is. (laughs) Because the problem is that the TV that's playing on get scan lines and flickers weird and stuff but on the if i'm playing a gamecube game it doesn't if i'm playing uh if i'm opening the action replay to open one of these emulators it you get the scan lines and the flicker and it's different on each of the three emulators that i that i open on on the action replay right Uh, and they're not really adjustable so that's why i was hoping if i got the official one it would be a little different Right. Uh, but I would hate to spend a hundred dollars, and then uh, turns out I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm trying to. I mean, I'm not. You know, you can go online and on YouTube, people like break down the differences between the original disc and like the actual replay hacks and stuff. Uh, maybe there's more that I'm that I'm missing. Maybe I can get yeah. a couple other ones. Uh, anyway, good news. You can always flip. It, if it turns out to not work. I mean, I kind of just wanted to have it also. <laughs> that too. Anyway, Ethel, thanks for the 35 months. Hi, boyos. With the new animation studio, what would be the Nintendo IP you would most like to see be made into some form of animated feature? Hmm. I mean, I never really watched the F-Zero show, but I think F-Zero would lend itself well to to be like yeah a, 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 a show or a movie or something yeah i think so star fox too i think would lend itself yes star well fox if like you want that. a star fox revival that's the way to do it is make it a show yeah uh metroid i don't think so because the whole point of that game is you being alone so yeah. i don't think that would make for a very compelling uh feature length movie Zelda, you run into the problem where like Link has to talk. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no way you can have a silent protagonist in a feature-length film like that. So they would have to solve that problem, or give him a he he's gonna need a character that is the main character. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like Zelda will have to be with him the whole time. Yeah, and then I'm trying to think what other Nintendo IP could be. Good. Fire Emblem. That could be like a PG Game of Thrones. Fire Emblem will be good. That would be big in Japan, for sure. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I think of all of the ones, Star Fox kind of makes the most sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, there we go. 
Uh, we talked briefly about 3DS and Wii U eShop being uh, taken down or not working or yeah. not being able to accept purchases. Uh, well, Ninten now we have dates. We have dates, and Nintendo got a little more clear on it. I think uh, yeah. the article that they link gives more information, and it's worded differently than what they say in the tweet. Okay. Yeah, so in the tweet, it says updates on the discontinuation of the eShop for Wii U and the 3DS family of systems. As of 8 29, 2022, it will no longer be possible to add funds. So that means uh, you can't use a 3DS or a Wii U to put money on your 3DS or Wii U eShop. However, yes. If you have the account linked with your Switch, you could just do it on your Switch and then continue to buy yes. stuff. Uh, as of 3-27-2023, purchases will no longer be available. So that's when you can't buy anything ever anymore. Yes. Uh, and then um, it's, it goes on to say, after 3-27-2023, uh, and the foreseeable future, it will still be possible to re-download games and DLC uh, receive software updates and enjoy online play on Wii U consoles and Nintendo 3DS systems. Enjoy online play. Who's playing online? <laughs> there's there's probably somebody still playing in I don't know Devil's Third or whatever online. Yeah, because you're not playing Mario Maker. That went offline. Yeah. And is Smash still online? I'd be surprised. I don't know. I doubt it. Kit Icarus Uprising? What are you talking about? That has online? Who remembers that game? <laughs> a lot of people. A lot of people love that game. Game wasn't that good. That game should have been better than it was. Game was very disappointing. Yeah. I'm playing Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate on my Wii U online. That's weird. There's so many more Monster yeah. Hunter games that came out after that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, Kid Icarus has competitive online? What the what? hell? That's so weird. Okay. Uprising is fun, Bob. Why did you not like it? Because it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 like, forces you to control it with a stylus, and it's just not good. It also, like, it came with a stand to hold it on because it was uncomfortable to play freehanded. Like, that's... It was just not That's pretty bad design. <laughs> it was not the way to play a game like that. No, it was it yeah. was stupid. Anyway, anything else in this article we should know about? Uh, I mean, those are the big things. Users uh, who link their now... Nintendo Network ID wallet used with Wii U and Nintendo 3DS family of systems with their Nintendo account wallet used with the Nintendo Switch family of systems can use the shared balance to purchase content on any of these systems until March 27th, 2023. After that, the balance can be used can only be used to purchase content on the Nintendo Switch family of systems. So you have until May 23rd, basically, to buy stuff. Yeah. If you have a Switch, you can just transfer funds it's not a big deal yeah Luibix um, says any recommendations for the 3ds that aren't weebish <laughs> uh yeah there's a couple i mean smash bros are coming to my mind right now <laughs> smash bros is great shovel knight's great you probably played those already though uh, um kirby planet Mario robobot is pretty good mario 3d lands and uh new super mario brothers 2 are pretty good uh, I really like Samus Returns. wasn't bad. I really, I didn't like Samus Returns. I really liked Pilot Wings. Believe it or not. Oh yeah, I, I thought that was good. That. It got a bad review, but it was like one of the first. It was. It was a launch title. It yeah. was a launch title for the 3DS, and there really wasn't much. And uh, I had a lot of fun with it. I think I hundred percent it. There might be one. <laughs> there might be one. I need to get pilot wings from the house because I think there's one mission that I didn't finish. So I'm like 99% oh. done. That could be a yeah. whole that could be a whole thing. Uh, uh, M MGS3 is on the eShop apparently. I can't imagine oh, that's the 3DS right. being the best that's way the to play that game. Version. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, I mean, if you absolutely need to play MGS3, go for right. it. But yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, we talked last week about 
games being delisted and being unplayable. And Nintendo, we've discovered, was the biggest culprit of this shit. Uh, and now we have another example of Nintendo going forward with this. <laughs> you know, going forward with shutting down the Wii U and 3DS eShops so that you can't get access to hundreds, if not thousands, of games. Just no more. Not available on other platforms in any capacity. Yeah. there There's a lot of great games that aren't just 3ds games like the virtual console stuff but uh yeah you can put them all on your 3ds if you just put some homebrew on there it's very easy to do (laughs) well bob nintendo doesn't want you to do that nintendo wants you to go and buy the games with your money like a good boy or girl you don't gotta tell nintendo also if they wanted us (laughs) to spend our money they would let us (laughs) They're currently not letting us. They don't. So. They don't want you to do that. Uh, yeah, you could also uh, get some Pokemon games. There's plenty of great yeah, DS and 3DS Pokemon yeah. games. Uh, 3DS is still a great console. Uh, uh, yeah. Even playing all my retro stuff on a 3DS is awesome. Uh, 3DS is the great way to play a lot of emulated stuff. Uh, just fucking jailbreak it. It's so much easier to to, to <laughs> put shit on there if you just have a homebrewed 3ds. It's freaking awesome. Anyway, uh, that's that. So, so my advice to you, if you're looking for 3ds games to buy before the shop goes down, just put homebrew on your 3ds. <laughs> uh, big Nintendo news this week. Big news. Big. There's there is uh DLC for. Mario Strikers. Nintendo Finally, we have fir- Daisy. Yes, Nintendo has announced the first free update uh, for its latest sports title, Mario Strikers Battle League, arriving in just a couple of days on July 21st in North America and the 22nd in the UK and Europe. The update was announced via tw- Twitter and will contain a bunch of additional goodies. Uh, this includes two new characters in the form of Daisy and Shy Guy, a new gear set called Night, and, a, and an additional stadium called Desert Ruin. Uh, the first update comes a little over a month since the game's initial launch on July on June 10th. Uh, Nintendo Life praised the game heavily in their review, stating it was a masterclass in competitive game design, awarding it a 9 out of 10. Are you uh, the fucking also- kidding me? The game is also a reasonable commercial success, spending one month uh, within the UK charts top 10 before being kicked off by Klonoa Fantasy uh, Revere, Revere series. This game was very bad. Uh, <laughs> this game was like really bad. Yeah, I know. I know it, it, this is one of those games that got good reviews, but like the people who like actually bought it and play it did not like it very much. Yeah, what the hell? Nintendo Life gave it a 9 out of 10. Are they high? Probably. After playing this game for four seconds, you're like, all right, something's wrong here. Yeah. I'm looking up the Metacritic. 73. That's that's not bad for any video game. That's bad bad for, uh, yeah, first-party Nintendo game and uh, Mario sports game. Yeah. I mean, Mario sports games have kind of been going down the tubes. Um, yeah, Mario sports games have not been good for a long time. <laughs> this one, it, this is a, an abomination. It's also an abomination yeah. that Daisy wasn't in it in the beginning. That they held Daisy for like a month. That's very bizarre. Like you, you would think at this point, Nintendo has a list of all the characters that they have to put into their, you know, multi-franchise titles like this or Mario Kart mm-hmm. or whatever. And Daisy's right there at Towards the middle. Yeah, Daisy was in the original. Yeah. You can't, t- that's like taking Captain Falcon out of Smash Brothers and then being like, yeah. oh, he's DLC now. But at least it was free. So, so, so yeah. apparently there's going to be three waves of DLC. Uh, this was the first one. Uh, the second one will probably be more characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the third one, they're just going to say, the game's good now. And that's going to be the, the DLC. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but they they added other stuff too. They added uh, Daisy Shy Guy, um, some knight armor. Yeah, and a new stadium. And a new stadium, which is like a sand yeah. stadium thing. 
I don't know. So I mean, it's I'm cool just adding stuff. I'm happy they're supporting it for the people who want to play it. I I I like it when Nintendo uh, adds stuff after the fact, keeping the game alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, Daisy should have been there from the very beginning. It's very weird. It's yeah. also very weird to release it a month after the game comes out because that means you just held it. You just held you you made something for the game and you just withheld it so that uh, the game could have a longer lifespan i guess yeah uh i mean that's practice weird we expect from it. like american triple a studios like ea and activision not necessarily right. uncle nintendo i feel like nintendo is still trying to figure out how to do online and like modern day stuff like dlc <laughs> oh absolutely absolutely <laughs> they still don't absolutely. know what they're doing yeah which is crazy because it's not that hard Guy Fella Wow says, "Did they fix the online worth purchasing yet? No, <laughs> and I don't think they will. The online is so bad in this that there's input lag, and it's like Ooh. not in, not just input lag, it, it input buffering. So like yeah. you'll press an input and it'll it'll hang for like a long time, and then it'll it'll it's very bad. It's very bad, and that's." That's like the absolute worst thing to have yeah. in any online game, let alone a sports game. It's very bad. Anyway, let's talk about something good. The Sega Genesis Mini yes. 2. It's coming to North America in a very weird way. After being yeah. announced for Japan last month, Sega Genesis, Sega's Genesis Mini 2 has a North American release date, and it's arriving just in time to shove it in your kid's trick-or-treat bag or keep it for yourself and play it. It's up to you. On October 27th, this more powerful version of the previous Mini holds 50 titles, including Sega CD games. It also tosses in one never-released bonus game, a Star bonus Mobile. Bonus game! The console itself has been designed after the Genesis Model 2, the one we had, uh, and will retail for $102.38. This is because it's being sold directly from Sega of Japan, and it can only be purchased through Amazon.com. So Sega of Japan is not shipping this out to major retailers in this country. If you want it, you have to buy it from them directly through Amazon. So you're basically buying an import. (laughs) <laughs> I was very confused. I yeah. did the pre-order because I went to the official website, and the official website is the Japanese website, but it, it has yes. English on it. And I clicked yeah. on it, and it said Amazon. And I was like, okay, awesome. Apparently, it was Amazon Japan. So here, here's the Amazon listing. Yeah. It says purchase July 13th. Uh, for sales. So so this is no, this is Amazon America. Yes. Uh, and then it says for sales in North America, Sega Genesis Mini 2. Okay. And then you buy it, and mine says it's arriving November 1st to November 4th. I mean, that'll I, probably change when it gets closer to release date. So when I did when I purchased it, I had to pay for shipping, which is not very prime of them. It was like $27 you know? or something, right? Uh yeah, it was exp- I'm trying to figure that out yeah. now. Uh, I paid I paid for the faster shipping cuz I want to make a video on it, you know, I want to get right. it quickly. Uh and the, the slow shipping was very very slow. Mm-hmm. Uh change shipping speed, maybe I can see. Okay. So 3 to 6 business days was $27. Right. Uh 5 to 14 business days was $22. I'm going to be honest, coming from Japan, that's actually not too bad. <laughs> uh, but the fact that it's fulfilled by Amazon yeah. and I have to pay that much for shipping is kind of crazy. So I ended up paying $146 for this thing. That's astronomical. For, that's like aftermarket prices or something like this. Yeah. Because like, what was it? The NES Classic was like 50 bucks. The SNES was 60 the Genesis Mini was around that. The first one was around that. Mm-hmm. People balked when the uh, the PlayStation Mini was a hundred dollars, and it was crap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope that they announce some better games for this thing too. Now it has some good stuff. It does, but it, it's it looks like it's kind of 
filled out with a lot of gaff though you know well i mean it's the second it's the second one i think they've used all their good stuff on the first one i'll take some um, reuses <laughs> yeah it's got afterburner 2 it's got alien soldier which is good it's got bonanza brothers fantasy zone which is a genesis port that i don't think ever came to north america um lightning force um mansion of the hidden souls which is a sega cd game uh night striker the ninja warrior the ooze outrun and outrunners which i'm shocked was not in the first version of this because outrun is like a sega staple Mm -hmm. uh rainbow island extra rolling thunder 2 shining force cd uh sega cd game shining in the darkness slip seed a sega cd game sonic 3d blast sonic cd splatterhouse 2 star mobile uh which we said is a never before released game uh super hang on vector man 2 and virtual racing and those last two again i'm surprised we're not on the original yeah vector man 2 is great yeah we like vector man 2 was vector man yeah, 1 Ve- on the original it was yeah all right that's good vector man 2 is great that's a that's a great addition sonic cd i haven't played much of sonic cd so I, i'm happy to give that another try yeah um Again, this is just the the preliminary list. They're going to add more to it uh, down the road. I think the big thing is that they're adding Sega CD games, you know, right. like Sonic CD, Shining yeah. Force, uh, Mansion of the Hidden Souls. I, so I've we'll heard probably good get things. More Sega CD games on this. I've heard good things about uh, uh, Silphid. Uh, mm-hmm. We own that for some reason. I don't remember why <laughs> I bought it, but I bought it. Yeah. Uh, so I'll give that. A, I, we don't have a Sega CD, so I'll give it a try no. on here. Uh, otherwise, you know what? I'm looking at a list. There's really not a lot of good uh, Sega CD games. <laughs> no, there really wasn't. I mean, there are a lot of good ports of Sega Genesis games. Um, and Sonic CD might be the best, like, original title for that system. But I don't know. There's a, There's a lot of, like, FMV crap on that. <laughs> Spider-Man versus the Kingpin. Yeah, that was an updated port of the Spider-Man versus the Kingpin that was on regular Genesis. Oh, I didn't know that was a game. Yep. It was weird because it was just called Spider-Man on the box and on the cartridge, but the title screen was Spider-Man versus the Kingpin. Oh, that explains that. This looks like shit, this game. (laughs) Oh, this is the Genesis one. This is the Genesis one. Yeah. You know, not a good game. So I'm gonna get this. I hope it's good. I hope I enjoy some of the games on here. Uh, I I I don't know what they could add to make it worth any more because yeah. obviously this is just a novelty. <laughs> I'm sure it's more popular. Maybe they decided to release it like this in America because it's more popular in Japan because of the games Maybe. that are on there. Uh, it is gonna come with a six button controller, which the first version didn't. So that's cool. That is um, cool. I do wonder if it'll be like, because on the original Genesis Mini, if you switch the region, um, you'll get like a completely different list of games. Like you'll not only get like, you'll not only get like the Japanese version of Streets of Rage, but you'll get like games that weren't in the North American release. You'll get the games that were in the Japanese release. That would be awesome. Yeah. So I wonder if this will do the same thing. Sukasa, thank you for the thirteen. Uh, no, for the ten months. Hey, Wolf Bros, did you guys see Thor? If so, what did you think? I haven't seen any Marvel movie in a real long time. No, nah, I've not seen Thor. That will be a wait for Disney Plus uh, release because that's what I've been doing with all the Marvel movies. But that's okay. I will have at least six things spoiled for me from that movie before I actually see the damn thing. <laughs> anyway. Uh, PlayStation Stars program announced. What the? F- oh, 403 error. I can't click on it. All right. Well, I have it open, so I will read it. Uh, this is from Grace Chen, the vice president of network advertising, loyalty, and licensed merchandise. Uh, throughout our company's 27 year history, we have continually moved, by, we are continually moved by how meaningful gaming experiences can create fond, lifelong memories for players. All of us at PlayStation take special joy in creating unique products and experiences that will delight our fans. This includes everything from our consoles and critically acclaimed games to community challenges such as Seize the Throne and Treat Codes to digital and live events, including State of Play. Today, I am pleased to reveal PlayStation Stars a brand new loyalty program that celebrates you, the player, 
uh, for being on this ever-growing gaming journey with us. PlayStation Stars will be uh, free to join when it launches later this year. Once you become a member, you'll earn rewards by completing various campaigns and activities. Our monthly check-in campaign simply requires that you play any game to receive an award, while other campaigns may require you to win tournaments, earn specific trophies, or even be the first player to platinum a blockbuster title in your local time zone. All PlayStation Stars members will have opportunities to earn loyalty points. Points can be redeemed in a catalog that may include uh, PSN wallet funds and select PlayStation Store products. As an additional benefit, PlayStation Plus members enrolled in Stars automatically earn points for purchases on the PlayStation Store. Also, as part of PlayStation Stars, uh, we are unveiling a new type of reward called Digital Collectibles. Collectibles are as uh, diverse as our portfolio of products and franchises. These are digital representations of things that PlayStation fans enjoy, including figurines and beloved icon iconic characters from games and other forms of entertainment, as well as cherished devices that tap into Sony's history. There will always be new collectibles to earn and an ultra rare collectible to strive for or something surprising to collect just for fun. We hope this program brings you to mind uh, past gaming memories while also making you excited for the future with PlayStation, uh, commemorating the gaming eras we created together, charting new paths to explore, and bringing players together for global celebrations. This is just the beginning for PlayStation Stars. The program will continue to evolve over time. We are currently doing some early testing on this program before it launches later this year uh, in a phased regional rollout. So I found a TechCrunch article about mm -hmm. it. And it says, with the program, PlayStation also unveiled digital collectibles for loyal members to earn. To yes. answer what everyone is thinking, no, it's not an NFT. Because it sounded yeah. a whole lot like an NFT. It sounded 100% like an NFT. I think, I, I, think, think, I think they were developing this program around NFTs. And then, this, and then everybody said, we don't like NFTs. And then they're like, yeah. well, we have this program. We got to do something with that. Might as well just put it. And this is the whole reason why NFTs are fucking stupid. Because yeah. the concept of NFTs could be easily done without NFTs at all. NFTs <laughs> don't provide any meaningful technology at all. We already, yeah. we're already there. Whatever, every time somebody tries to explain to you why NFTs are so great, it could, it doesn't have to be an NFT. You could just put yeah. something else there. Yeah, it it could literally be anything else. Mm -hmm. So, which is what PlayStation did. They're like, okay, we could just do it without NFTs, and then they did, yeah. and then here we are. We have it. It's great. I mean, other than that, though, this sounds like your typical loyalty program, your typical rewards program. Nintendo has something similar. I think Microsoft has something similar. So now Sony has their equivalent of it. The PlayStation Star. I think that's great. I, I think uh, yeah. being able to, like, look, we're all gamers here. We're going to buy a lot of games. <laughs> I think uh, if I buy a lot of shit on the PlayStation Store, I should be rewarded for that. I should get a little something. Yeah. I think digital collectibles are fine. I got nothing wrong with that. I, I, I would love a digital collectible. I'd love to be able to have a thing and be like, look at yeah. the thing I got for buying all this other stuff. Or I'm such a gamer, I got this thing. You know, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You don't have to add the blockchain to it because it's tied to PlayStation. <laughs> you can only get it through PlayStation anyway. So there's no reason to have a public domain of P of who's purchasing what. Yeah. So uh, good. I'm I'm glad we're getting some 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 uh, I don't know something to show for our purchases on PlayStation. I think this is uh, yeah. only a positive thing. Oh, a hundred percent. Uh, I'm just moving something around in the keep. Okay. Uh, now I'm reading the chat now. Yeah. Just something nice to have yeah. digitally, apparently, like trophies. Yeah, they. Yeah. It's interesting because uh, the big deal used to be Xbox achievements. Yeah. And then I remember people started going nuts about getting trophies and platinum trophies and stuff. And that now that it yeah. seems to have flipped, it seems like that's more important to people now is the is the PlayStation trophies. Well, because PlayStation became the bigger brand. Right, right. I remember when the Xbox One was coming out, uh, and it when it was announced at E3 and it had such a terrible showing, 
I was sitting there trying to convince my friends to still get Xboxes because I didn't want to lose my gamer score. <laughs> and then all my friends got PlayStation 4s and then I was like, well, now I got to get a PlayStation 4. Yeah. I mean, I guess it just goes to show you that like, you know, that only goes so far. <laughs> right. Your game, Like keeping your gamer score. But you wound up getting an Xbox anyway and it all transferred over. So, yeah, but now who gives a shit about my gamer score? Exactly. I'm playing on so many other things. If I had a Nintendo gamer score, that'd be sick. Yeah. I'm surprised they haven't done it. I mean, I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised Nintendo hasn't done anything like that. Right. Uh, anyway, Thrill House with 100 bits. This is strictly for Will's life sized Batman. <laughs> he, he messaged me on Twitter. Uh, Big Bad Toy Store has a life size uh, maquette of Batman from Arkham Knight. It's like two thousand dollars. So uh, th- that thing, I've seen that a lot. They made a lot of those. I feel like, and that's I, not I, even a good price. It was <laughs> like pretty cheap when the Toys R Us on Long Island was going out of business. They uh, had that, and it was not that expensive. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think this because I think this is being made by like one of those high end collectible companies. The, so like they're gonna want you to pay out the nose for it's rubber, like you could like it's soft to the top, <laughs> like you could poke it and it's like a little yeah. soft. It's not that good looking when you get up close to it. No, no, it, the the face especially like that that Batman face works great in Unreal Engine, <laughs> not necessarily in the real world yeah yeah no it's it's not it's not great yeah anyway ea's new skate game i've been seeing a lot of video of this leaked footage yeah a lot of it leaks um i mean it it looks like skate but uh they're they're changing the change in the way that you're gonna play it i think it looks Uh, great i don't know about this news though yeah EA's new skate is going to be a live service free to play skateboarding game. Developer Full Circle announced in a video on Thursday. Fans have been eagerly waiting for some kind of Skate 3 follow up for years, but this new title won't be the Skate 4 they might have been expecting. Instead, instead of a numbered inter- iteration, Full Circle's imagining Skate, that's the name, though EA stylizes it with a period at the end, as a constantly evolving world with community-created content that's easy for everyone to ollie into. Uh, I should note that I think the original Skate also had a period at the end of it, but someone will have to correct the chat. Uh, it's an authentic evolution of the franchise and taking what Skate 3 was in 2010 and bringing it into the now and the future. Uh, Darren Chung, the creative director on Skate, said in an interview with The Verge, uh, that is not only an evolution of the franchise, but it's an evolution of of where skateboarding is and was from 2010 to now, and also where games are from then to now. Uh, Skate will be arriving on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC with cross-play and cross-progression. The developers are expecting a mobile version too, uh, but the full release is still a long ways away. In June, Full Circle debuted a pre-pre-pre-alpha footage and invited players to sign up for a play test uh, but they have they haven't given any sort of release time frame for the launch. Uh, I think the word launch is an interesting word for us because of the way we're developing the game and the fact that we want to get players feedback very, very early. Uh, Isabel McQuad, head of product management on Skate, uh, said, uh, we are just very flex. We are just very flexible with what's going to be with what with what's going to be the list of things that will be available at launch because I think that will depend it will depend on what our fans are telling us to be honest I can't share that list with you because we want to build it we want to build it with our players feedback uh, but Chung's impression on this reporter uh, that even though exactly what's in the game isn't locked yet it's going to he says it's going to be skate it's going to feel like skate it will be a skate game uh, one feature developers are excited about uh was what they called collabo zones a working title uh which are areas that can be collaboratively collaboratively built by players and appear in other people's worlds and thursday's video full circle showed off some examples including an absolutely massive ramp and a structure that looks like a skyscraper tall pachinko board oh your favorite oh my god well i guess you fall Uh, through it yeah (laughs) 
you that was a big uh, deal. That was go- a big thing in one of the original skate games was the big ramp where you just r- wreck yourself. Yes. Yeah. So they'll probably have uh, something like that. You don't know when you jump into a city, what's being built or what was built or what's going on. Chung said you jump in and it's like, oh, shit, what is this? Like a human uh, Plinko wall. Uh, we need to go check that out. And collabo zones you make and collabo zones you make will appear in the world for other people in real time. Uh, well, it's easy to imagine how that could create some truly wild and spontaneous moments for every time you pop into the game. Uh, as with any real time and collaborative creation tool, there's serious risk of misuse. Chunks of the team is taking moderation seriously. I can't say exactly how we're going to tackle every problem, but it's something that we're uh, already cognizant of and know that we will need to be policing. He said, uh, the good thing that we have, the good thing we have with our game is that you're not going to have to live in fear. It's not like other games where there's guns and violence. There's none of that in our game. Policing will be for us, I guess, sillier, lighthearted things. Uh, but we definitely want to keep sure. We definitely want to make sure that there is a space, safe space for every player to come in and be able to enjoy themselves. I guess what he's trying to say is if you make a vert ramp that looks like a dick, it's going to get taken down. <laughs> ah. So, so no dick ramps. They mentioned a launch sounds weird to them because of the way they're rolling this out. That yeah. to me just sounds like there's going to be an alpha and a beta and stuff. Yeah. Well, next paragraph goes into the game's business model, uh, which again, it's going to be a free to play game. Uh, and McQuard uh, said microtransactions are primarily going to be about cosmetics and convenience. I want it to be very clear that this is not going to be a pay to win game. There won't be any gameplay areas hidden behind a paywall. Players won't be able to buy any gameplay altering advantages. The team believes that the best business models are based on respect, trust, and transparency. And they want to create a healthy model that will allow us to continue investing uh, back into the game, according to McQuad. Uh, The team is also planning on having things like seasonal drops and live events in the game, but we are still exploring different options. The new game does sound promising on its face, a free skateboarding game backed by a big developer, but the reporter is having trouble getting excited for yet another big live service title. Uh, the reporter is already a regular Fortnite player and has started getting into Final Fantasy XIV, meaning it's hard for them to get back into other any other. Uh, they're constantly ch- uh, choosing to let games like Destiny 2, Rocket League, and Fall Guys pass by. With more big free-to-play games on the way, finding time to play them isn't going to be any easier. And it's getting to the point uh, where it's a relief to have to pick up a game with a definite end. No, it's the, EA has lied before about uh, microtransactions. <laughs> so yeah, I don't believe anything that they say. But they said microtransactions will primarily be for cosmetics. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just say they're for cosmetics. What, yeah. do you, what else could it be? And exactly. anything else is probably bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, like if it's anything else, it's going to be a bad... Th- like, if it's... What else could it be? Stats? That would be bad. Yeah. that It could be bad of uh, new... Like, new players. Uh, abilities. Like skaters, abilities. Levels. That's a big one. If you hold levels yeah. behind a paywall. That's... Because then other people can't play them in multiplayer. And, and even characters. That's... Yeah, that seems different than cosmetics because it's a whole uh, different person you're playing as. The if, if, if they have different stats and stuff like they would in like yeah. a like a like a Tony Hawk game. Uh, the reporter asked if a paid version of Skate was ever in the cards or if it was always imagined to be free to play. Um, honestly, it's always kind of been that even from early on. Chung said, "If I could go back and make Skate three in 2015 or something, I don't know if it would have been a boxed product." I think it just makes sense for the franchise in terms of what the community wants. I don't know if having an iterative title makes a ton of sense. It feels like, and it sounds trite to say, the natural evolution of the franchise and skating and games and all the things uh, coming together seems like the right thing for us to pursue. So I, I actually don't mind skate being a live service. I think it would actually make a lot of sense to be a free to play game that's just always on and and it's online and you just it's like a little hub world and you just fuck around that sounds awesome to me 
Yeah. Uh, the biggest worrying thing is how are they going to sustain that? And also, this is EA. Yeah. So the I'm a little worried. This game is the second this game is unprofitable. It's gonna they're gonna like abandon it and eventually like shut it down like yeah. real quick. I mean, look at Anthem. I think Anthem is still up and running, but they do not give a flying shit about that game anymore. I've had a lot of fun in games with like hub worlds, mm -hmm. just sitting in the hub world and like trying to climb shit you're not supposed to. And like, yeah. that's the whole, that's this whole game would be a hub yeah. world where you're just with a bunch of people trying to climb shit you're not supposed to. You're like gonna up, open into the world and you're like, how'd that guy get up there? And then you're gonna try to do it. And it's gonna be fucking awesome. And I guess that kind of makes more sense for Skate because Skate was always more of like a sim game, mm -hmm. whereas Tony Hawk was like an arcade skateboarding game where you have to do wacky objectives like, you know, get a million points or collect the skate letters or attack that donkey or whatever. Whereas yeah. Skate, it was actually much more trying to be like skateboarding where you're hanging out with your friends, you're finding cool spots, you're doing cool tricks, and you're not doing like a million trick combos. You're doing like one or two, but you're making it look as good as possible. Yeah, and, and it look, so, what I've seen that was leaked uh, looks a lot of fun. I'm excited for the alpha or whatever. I just, uh, I'm a yeah. little worried about the microtransaction situation. I think that there's going to be something unsavory about it, and then they'll walk it back and go, well, yeah. sorry, and then everything will be fine. Which is, I mean, talking about what people wanted, people wanted Skate 4. Like, it's the simplest thing in the world to do the Skate 4. Mm -hmm. But the EA of 2022 is not going to just do Skate 4. They have to do something stupid like creating an open world live service game that's free to play and sustains on microtransactions and they'll probably be microtransactions for something important i don't mind having a definitive like this is skate now it's a live service yeah the, the issue is how they're going to handle the microtransactions yeah uh anyway that's skate but we're not yeah. done with ea no, uh, former, uh, the, the current CEO of Unity and the former boss at EA, John Riccatello, has said that if studios don't consider monetization in their games during the creative process, then they are fucking idiots. And, uh, mm -hmm. but has since apologized for the comment. During an interview with PocketGamer.biz, the CEO discussed the announcement that Unity and Iron Source would be merging while also touching on the criticism both companies have received regarding the inclusion of monetization during early development. Uh, this is this is Riccatello's quote. Ferrari and some other high-end car manufacturers still use clay and carving knives. It's a very small portion of the game industry that works that way, and some of these people are my favorite people in the world to fight with. Uh, they're the most beautiful and pure, brilliant people. They're also some of the biggest fucking idiots. <laughs> Uh, the CEO went on to elaborate uh, on his former com uh, comment, explaining that the games industry has changed over the years, saying it used to be the case that developers would throw their game over, developers would throw their game over the wall to the publicist and sales force with literally no interaction beforehand. That model is baked into the philosophy of a lot of art forms and mediums, and it's one I deep I am deeply respectful of. I know their dedication and care. But this industry divides people between those who still hold to that philosophy and those who massively embrace how to figure out what makes a successful product. And I don't know a successful artist anywhere that doesn't care about what their player thinks. Uh, this is where this cycle of feedback comes uh, feedback comes back and they can choose to ignore it, but to choose to not know it at all is not a great call. Following Riccatello's comics, he's received... Uh, backlash from members of the development community with some strongly disagreeing with the CEO's sentiment. Uh, I made Apple's iPhone game of the year in 2019, Donut County, using Unity, but according to their CEO, I'm a big fucking idiot for not making uh, whole IO the, the free-to-play game that ripped it off, says indie developer Ben Esposito. Uh, Bjorgen Hackett, developer who worked on If Found, responded on Twitter saying, John Riccatello thinks I'm an idiot. I think he's a little greedy capitalist pig who only cares about money. I'm so tired of people like him ruining things I love. <laughs> uh, however, however, uh, where to go? Riccatello tweeted out his apologies and said that his words were taken out of context. 
uh, adding that he was deeply sorry if what he said offended any game de uh, developer. A subsequent, more in-depth apology followed, which attempted to further explain what he meant. Uh, this isn't the first time Rick Tello has commented on monetization in games. In 2011, he defended the use of microtransactions, saying it's a great model and it represented a substantially better future for the industry. Uh, Unity has faced criticism recently after it laid off 200 workers shortly before acquiring Iron Source and a $4.4 billion all-stock deal. R Rick Tello reportedly assured employees two weeks before the news that there would be no layoffs during an all-hands meeting but went on to lay off 4% of its workforce. So he, he his, his, I, the thing is that like, he thinks if people aren't baking in uh, uh, monetization into their games, uh, they're not like developing games correctly. Like, 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 like if you're not baking in monetization from the very beginning, your game's not going to be su financially successful. Um, yeah. What he doesn't understand, what, what's baffling for him to understand is that not everybody's trying to get rich off of the people who play their games. Some people right. just want to make good games. Yeah. And there are cases I mean, where the game could be ruined by baking in, uh, you know, uh, the, the monetization from the very beginning. I'm trying to find... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to misquote it, but it, it, years ago, when he was the head of EA, he had a quote that went something along the lines of, do you remember when you bought a game and that was it? Mm -hmm. Like, and he was basically saying, like, he was so happy we don't live in those times anymore. Mean, meanwhile, like, nobody had a problem with that. <laughs> you buy a game and you had the game. You didn't yeah. buy a game and it was broken at launch and then you had to patch it and patch it and patch it and then hopefully get something playable or like you have to completely revamp the game after launch because everybody hates it and try to make something likable out of it. Yeah, that almost it almost never happened where a game went gold and had a game breaking bug that almost never yeah. happened because it forced people to QA test the shit out of it. Yeah, and sometimes we get like a definitive edition of the game that had like updates and shit. But for the most yeah. part, uh, games just launched and they fucking worked. <laughs> and now they don't have a reason to spend so much time on the going gold portion. They could just release a broken yeah. game and then fix it later. But I mean, then they get punished. People like CD Projekt Red get punished and realize where where why they can't get away with that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's just some games just aren't going to be able to have monetization baked into it or else it might ruin the game. Like we have to have yeah. different types of games. Some games are going to be just fine with their monetization model. Other games are just going to have to, you know, not make a lot of money. But, you know, being successful doesn't have to be, you know, being the next fucking Jeff Bezos. You could just be successful yeah. with uh, getting a lot of people to play your game and that's it. Then on the yeah. next one, maybe you'll make a lot of money. Yeah, just put out, just put out the game. If you have to patch it, we understand. But like, just put out a good game. Yeah, and people will buy it, and that's it. Yeah, they're fucking idiots to him because yeah. he just wants to make a lot of money because he's the fucking yeah. Unity CEO. He, he's only he's only in this career. Because he wants to make a lot of money. And he wants to make a lot of money for his company and the companies that he's worked for. I also want to point out that uh, I believe it was this guy who was responsible for what was known as Project $10 back in the 360 and PS3 era. For those of you who don't know, Project $10 was a scam to try and get you to buy games new. Because if you bought games new, it came with content that would not be available to you if you bought the game new used if you bought the game used then you have to pay ten dollars for things like online multiplayer extra levels in the case of arkham city the catwoman missions it was so a fucking was, genius plan though because it worked it was <laughs> it worked and that sucks that it worked well it it ruined gamestop which i think kind yeah. of uh might have been worth it in the end 
Well, that was the point. They wanted yeah. GameStop to go out of business. It was a weird time because, like, the game game developers hated GameStop because they used game sales. But at the same time, all they did was work with GameStop. Special GameStop launches, special yeah. GameStop DLC, all this other bullshit that, like, we hate you, GameStop, but we love you so much. Yeah, they, like, had to. They, they, I feel like they worked with GameStop because they felt like they had to. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, is Red Dead Online dead? The original Red uh, Dead Online. No, the new one. The one new one's dead? Red Dead Redemption 2. It's not dead, but it might as well be. Uh, last night, Red Dead Online fans came together to mourn the death of Rockstar's service, online service via a, via a community-run funeral in-game. Uh, tributes to the online component of Red Dead Redemption 2 poured in all over social media. Players collectively dressed in black and gathered around the game's numerous graveyards. Uh, the funeral for the live service game was announced last week to celebrate... Uh, why, why did everything load now? The funeral for the game's live service was announced last week uh, to celebrate one year since the game was abandoned, in quotes, by Rockstar. With little, to, with little new content added over the last 12 months. The following day, Rockstar posted a lengthy update to the state of the live service game, uh, stating that it had moved development resources away uh, towards production of the next Grand Theft Auto title. As a result, Red Dead Online would no longer receive a major theme content updates like in previous years, um, and instead would simply highlight existing content and seasonal events. Uh, yet the cash cow that is Grand Theft Auto Online will continue to receive major content updates uh, in the run-up to the next game. Fans have long been frustrated by the disparity of support between GTA and Red Dead Online. Roger Clark, the voice and performance actor for Red Dead 2's protagonist Arthur Morgan, also acknowledged the funeral in a tweet. That is crazy. I didn't. Well, first of all, I didn't even know people were still playing this game. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but it's crazy that the it's crazy that so many people decided to be like, you know what? I'm so upset. Uh, this game's dead to me now. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's shocking that I feel like Rockstar didn't even try with Red Dead Redemption Online. Uh, this yeah, time around like they like the game came out. And everyone liked the single player. It had a multiplayer component. They pushed it for a little bit. But when it didn't immediately hit, like, GTA online numbers, they're just like, you know what? Fuck this. Just, just do whatever, I, and then we'll go work on uh, GTA 6. I loved the online in the original Red Dead. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, me too. I played it a lot. And uh, one of my favorite things was, like, walking past people and seeing if they were going to fuck me up or not. Um, I thought, I, I thought this had a lot of potential and apparently it launched and, uh, people didn't like it that much. Uh, it was very upsetting. So, I mean, I don't blame people for being upset because, uh, it yeah. seems like Rockstar didn't really give a shit about it anyway. Yeah. Uh, which is crazy to me because, you know, Rockstar puts so much effort into everything they do. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, this doesn't hit, you know, this doesn't hit the target at once. And instead of trying to rehabilitate it and get people to, because this could have been like GTA Online 2, just with horses and cowboys, you know, it, it could have easily been that, but they didn't even try. But, like, but once it came out and once it didn't hit the numbers, they're like, all right, we'll move on. They also, like, could have monetize the online like like if the online was good they could have you know milked everybody for some extra money you know like like yeah. it, it would have been financially beneficial for them to do something like that and uh i guess yeah. they didn't they didn't feel like they needed to uh but i am all again happy they're f all, all full speed ahead on uh, uh grand theft auto 6 because yes they gotta get that game out they gotta yeah. start working on that shit. They they can't keep re-releasing Grand Theft Auto Five, <laughs> right? Uh, anyway, uh, why are we just now talking about uh, plays a uh, Game Pass and uh, 
Xbox, uh, Game Pass, and, and PlayStation service games. Because we only just got, we only recently just got uh, what the new games are going to be. Okay. So, yeah. There's that. I can't, uh, I can't click on the uh, PlayStation 1 for some reason. PlayStation doesn't want me to, I'm banned from PlayStation. Oh, really? I'm using a VPN and I don't think they like the VPN. Oh, maybe. Uh, well, we'll start with Xbox then. So, coming to Game Pass uh, in the near future, we have As Dusk Falls uh, today. Uh, that's a day one available. That's day one available on Game Pass. That's getting good reviews, uh, from what I've seen. Oh, that's that uh, weird looking game. Yes, uh, As Dusk Falls is an original interactive drama from Interior Night that explores the entangled lives of two families across 30 years. Starting in 1998, with a robbery gone wrong in a small town in Arizona, the choices you make have powerful impact on the characters' lives in this uncompromising story of betrayal, sacrifice, and resilience. Drive the lives and relationships of multiple characters in a decade-spanning story. Oh, how cute. Yeah. Uh, Sins of the Solar Empire Rebellion uh, coming to PC July 21st. Watch Dogs 2 will be available on uh, Cloud Console and PC July 19th. That's today. Um, MotoGP 22 available the 21st on Cloud, PC, and Console. Torment Tides of Numeria on Cloud and Console the 21st. Inside uh, Cloud, Console, and PC on July 29th. Uh, and uh, Garden Story and Solastia Crown of the Ma the Magister are currently available on cloud, PC, and console. Uh, so Inside's a big deal. Watch Dogs yeah. 2 is kind of a big deal. I've um, heard Watch Dogs 2 is actually what the first game should have been. Right. The first game was kind of bland. <laughs> Well, I I kind of I kind of like the first Watch Dogs because I it was I like Assassin's Creed but in the modern day and I could I was waiting for Assassin's Creed to hit the modern day until I realized that was never going to happen. Uh, it was good, but I feel like it, they they could have done so much more with it than just do Assassin's Creed meets Grand Theft Auto. Mm -hmm. um, by all accounts, the second one, from what I've heard, does more with the concept. So that would be a game to try out. And then what's on PlayStation? Because I can't read it. <laughs> uh, Strays, the the cyberpunk cat simulator, is oh! available for free. Yeah, it's part of uh, PlayStation uh, extras Shit. or premium. Yeah, I, I gotta get that. Yeah, my ex, my PlayStation uh, is at the studio. Fuck. That's for PS4 and PS5. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate for PS5 is available. Uh, Marvel's Avengers for PS4 and PS5. Don't play that. Mm -hmm. um, also available, Assassin's Creed Unity, Black Flag, Rogue, uh, Freedom's Cry, and the Ezio Collection, all on PS4. Saints Row 4 Reelected and Saints Row Gat Out of Hell on PS4. Um, Spirit of the North Enhanced Edition for PS5. Ice Age, Scrat's Nutty Adventure on PS4. Jumanji, the video game on PS4, Paw Patrol on a roll on PS4, and Ready Set Heroes on PS4. Um, and then the classics lineup for premium members, you get Echo Shift, uh, No Heroes Allowed, and Loco Roco Midnight Carnival, all PSP games. Uh, I'm going to utilize that. I'm going to play Stray. Yeah, I just don't know when. I've heard Stray is very good. I've heard it's not very long. Uh, so that's good if you don't like long games. Uh, I would say, well, Tide. Tide? I, I mean, I don't yeah. know. Stray being a launch game, uh, that's 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 pretty, it's pretty big deal. Well, I mean, what's that? That one next as Dusk Falls is also a launch game. Yeah, it's like a shitty game though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's getting good reviews, or whatever. Think, but like, Stray is like a really big deal. I think they're both big deals of equal level but in different ways i think stray is appealing more to people who want like a more relaxed type of like i don't want to say use the term walking simulator but like more of like an easygoing game and also appeals to people like cats 
for some reason. See, I don't Whereas, like cats, dusk, but I want to play a stupid game because it's, it's like a good stealth game. It's appealing more to people who like like serious drama in their games, like people who like Telltale's The Walking Dead and things like mm-hmm. that. So, which I like Telltale's The Walking Dead, so I guess I would play as Dusk Falls. But, well, yeah. I'm going to enjoy myself playing Stray. All right. Uh, you do that. And while I do that, there's Lego news. <laughs> yes. Uh, the iconic Atari 2600 console gets the Lego treatment. Uh, the 2600 uh, is getting the Lego treatment. The Danish toy company's latest model is based on the 1980 revision of the iconic console rather than in its 1977 debut and consists of a measly 2,500 pieces which seems like a missed opportunity to offer 2,600 pieces, but I digress. It will launch on August 1st for $239 and coincide with Atari's 50th anniversary. The launch is the launch of the set comes a little over two years after Nintendo made a similarly leveling recreation of the, of the Nintendo Classic NES console, but while the, the Lego Nintendo console included uh, both a buildable console itself and an accompanying CRT TV, the Atari model is more self-contained. There is a console itself as well as a controller with a movable joystick. Fantastically, the console does also open up to reveal a diorama of a 1980s living room. That's fucking uh, awesome. Uh, where is it? Yo, yeah. this picture uh, is set- so oh. big. <laughs> How big is this? It's got to be big because the set also includes a trio of game cartridges based on classic Atari games like Asteroids, Adventure, and Centipede, which can be slotted into the console itself. Finally, three external dioramas show off blocky recreations of the game of uh, all three games. The existence of the set was previously reported on by German Lego fan site Promo Bricks. Uh, the 2600 was one of the most memorable gifts I got as a kid. It said Lego designer Chris McVie uh, in a press statement. Uh, this is why it has been such an incredible experience to bring two icon- icons together, Atari and Lego, uh, in this awesome set. We hope that building this console, this classic console, takes you back to those halcyon days when a handful of pixels meant a world of adventure. These pictures, 8,000 pixels wide. <laughs> 300 oh, dpi are you fucking kidding me yeah, that would make an actual 2600 explode i do like the inside though. i like the little like, they have a similar thing on the inside of, it, of the nes but this is this is nicer looking this is cooler yeah this is this is a very cool lego set i do like the multiple cartridges this is really cool oh this little guy yeah. this little, little asteroids guy this is really cool yeah I wish the friggin' pictures would look like who puts an eight thousand pixel wide <laughs> picture on a website. The Verge. That, that's really cool. Does because they uh, are classy. I noticed you didn't put this in there though. We learned that uh, not only are we getting a Lego Bowser, we learned why well, we talked about that last week. Yeah, but they also unveiled a bigger one. <laughs> so there's two now. Uh, I, I just think because it's for sale. <laughs> Say that again. It's not for sale. It's just going to be showing off at Comic Con. I thought it was. For, I thought you could buy it. No. Uh. Yeah, the massive new Bowser is animatronic and won't be for sale, but it will be hanging around San Diego Comic Con later this week. Ah, fuck. Uh, yeah. Forget it then. It's stupid anyway. Uh, massive Bowser. Bowser figure was first teased earlier this month. Uh, we don't need to read about Is every anime... little detail about this right, stupid well, fucking I'm just thing. Gonna, I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say, it's animatronic. It's gonna be made up of 60, 663,000 individual bricks, uh, and will and is over two hundred and thirty six times as many as the home set. So yeah, it's just a big boy. It's a big boy, and it's animatronic, apparently, and will fall apart in the yeah. middle of San Diego Comic-Con. Absolutely. That's all the news between the week time! Yeah, boy! This one's a doozy. Get ready. I feel like this one, 
is best if you just read it though. I feel like okay. r- reading it out loud isn't going to have the same impact, but I'll try to do okay. my best for the podcast listeners. This is by uh, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is by Pretty X Ricky, and it says cop talking into shoulder. I'm gay and I love sucking penis over. <laughs> And it has the sound effects in it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got to have that. I thought. I thought. <laughs> I that is, that it. audibly laughed when I read when I read it to myself. Yeah, that was very funny. Huh. Anyway, uh, now we'll talk to you guys very quickly. Yes. Starting with anyone who left a comment over on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Uh, last week in the comments, we got uh, Tr- Trevor Napier, who says, uh, talking about stores taking things away, Disney used to do this all the time with movies where they would take a movie off the market and it would go to the vault. Yeah, that's like the famous yes. example. That's the very famous example. Um, they did that uh, to try and keep the value of their content uh high because it, it was still at a time when uh people did uh movie studios and directors did not want films released on home video because they thought it ruined the the, the magic and the experience of the movie which i think we're now starting to see that argument again with like people saying like oh we got to go watch the movie in the cinema because it's magic and it's bullshit um, so that they would have the Disney vault where they would release Aladdin for like, you know, the winter. And then once Christmas is over, go back in the vault. So make sure you bought it. Um, but they would re-release, they would open the vaults every so often and re-release films. The problem with video games is that they don't do that. <laughs> once it goes in the vault, it goes in the vault. And it's, it's very rare that it would come out again. Right. So. Uh, thanks to have, Disney Plus, the vault is dead. We have Jay Park Misplay who says, Bob, you're my favorite weeb. The way you say waifu is gold. And then he says, Densha Dego. <laughs> uh, I learned it's waifu. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Bat Mabel says, Will, if people could smell bullshit from a mile away, corporate Twitters would not be a thing. I don't understand why he's talking to you about that. Uh, because I, I had mentioned people can smell bullshit generally. Because uh, we were talking about like if other EA studios would like when the EA Twitter account said that, you know, the tweet, he's a 10, but he only plays single player games. And we said like now one of the solutions was to have other uh, EA Twitter, uh, EA Studio Twitters like dogpile on him. Uh, I had said that people would think like clearly see that this was a marketing ploy and not right. want to you know, like, you know, object to it and whatnot. Um, I still think that people could smell bullshit, but I mean, there's levels to the bullshit. You know, sometimes it, it slips under your nose because it's only a little bit of bullshit. But like, when there's a lot of bullshit, you you start you start to notice it. I I like, think I like, think somebody has to find the bullshit and tell everybody else that there's bullshit. I think most yeah. people are pretty stupid. <laughs> well, my, one of my favorite quotes from the original Men in Black is uh, a person is smart right (laughs) people people are easily frightened scared quickly manipulated kind of stupid so like a a person you can make understand a group of people is going to be a little bit difficult yeah you know to do that that's true but i i think by and large you know if something if something that sounds too good to be true people will realize that it is i am frequently surprised by how stupid most people are <laughs> yes no is it yeah uh we also have a no who says fun fact the nub on a hat is called a squatchy <laughs> it's always weird when like things on articles of clothing that you take for granted have like weird ass names like you know the little hard things on shoelaces i know this one i know this one i know this one yeah that has a name it's called an aglet yes and that's from a comic book 
Uh, Justice League Unlimited. <laughs> um, Stristix Burke says, for the God of War boss fighting, yeah, this is a thing that I learned. Uh, it depends on if we're talking story boss or the optional post-game boss. Apparently, it's the optional post-game boss. I didn't know this at the time. Uh, big difference. Took me ages to get to the post-game boss, and I had to fuck with my gear and abilities to get past it. Apparently, so it's think, a Valkyrie, and it's like the hardest yes. Valkyrie in the game. Yeah, because like I, I, I forgot about this because I did it once, and I'm like, nah, I'm not doing this. Um there's val like there's many different valkyries throughout the game that you have to fight and like get their abilities or whatever the fuck uh and then eventually you have to fight the the queen valkyrie and that's the hardest boss fight in the game and that like you need to like actually mess with your stats and stuff and whatever to try to defeat uh and use all of your fighting abilities to take her out i've i tried to fight one valkyrie died instantly i'm like you know what this is optional for a reason I don't need to do this. I will just complete the main game. <laughs> right. So that complicates things a little more. Yeah. But I, I fucking drop me in. I'm down. I'll still do it. I don't give a shit. <laughs> uh, all right. Now we're in the chat. How you doing? Yes. Everybody? Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, uh, what you got for us? Working in retail gives you daily reminders of how stupid people are. That's true. Yes. <laughs> There's that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, think about the dumbest friend that you have. Most people are stupider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. Question for Will. Hal Jordan or Hal Stewart? John Stewart. John Stewart. Fuck <laughs> Uh, the Daily Kyle Show? Rayner. <laughs> Which one's that? Uh, the '90s one with the crab mask, the one we oh. had an action figure of as a kid. Uh, uh, Hal Jordan and John Stewart are like the same level to me, because just because like they're the same, not the same era, but like the same idea in my mind. Um, but yeah, I'm a '90s kid, man. So Kyle Rayner. <laughs> Ethel says the last Valkyrie in that game is so damn hard. It took me nearly all night to beat it. See, that's the thing is that people are like, oh, my God, it was so hard. It took me like three hours. And I'm like, I was ready to spend a whole fucking day on, on this on this fight. <laughs> so, like, I'm, that's why I'm like, you know, it's hard. Like, I'm when you say it's hard, when you're saying it's the hardest thing in the game, I'm expecting like weeks, you know? Yeah. Not like fucking, oh, it took me a whole night. Like, okay, that's what I'm expecting to do is spend a night on it. The whole yeah. the whole thing with the difficulty is that I I haven't played the fucking game in years and I'm and I haven't beaten it, and I'm just gonna dive right into the hardest thing in the game and hope that I can beat it. And I think I'll be just fine if you say it takes a couple hours. I'll take the couple hours. Let me take the couple yeah. hours on it. I spent three hours the other day on a Mario Maker level. On a fucking Mario Maker level. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Cannon, thank you for the 16 months. Hey, boys. Hello. Hey. Um, has Will received his uh, gift? No, I don't know where I put no, it. No, I have not. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I have it. I don't know where, though. <laughs> Are you bros going to roll around RetroCon again this year? Yes, and well, yes, we, we have a, a panel. Yes, we do. Sunday at no. 2.30. No. It's fucking Saturday. <laughs> you sell me Sunday. Did I tell you Sunday? I copied you and pasted it, so whatever I told you is right, but I remember. Oh, my God, it's Sunday. Shit. All right, Sunday. Did I... Did I mess that up? Let me double check the email because I remember Sunday, August fourteenth, from two thirty to three thirty. That's what you texted me. I remember hearing in my brain when I read it. <laughs> I remember <laughs> hearing Saturday. <laughs> oh my god! Why? Why do you do this to me? Uh, Kate McCat, uh, if you could. All 
All design your own custom switch. Thank you. Kate McCad, if you could all design your own custom switch OLEDs, what would they look like? Or what games do you want uh, to see get special edition? Wait, the, the email I pulled up was from 2020. Hold on. <laughs> Hate you. Um I would I would have designed a switch OLED around Metroid Dread, something like with set uh, based on Samus's outfit. So like the Joy Cons would be white and blue. Uh and maybe the back of the switch itself would be like Samus's visor. That would be sick. Sunday 2:30. Can everybody now just spam hashtag wolves right in the comments? Thank you. Uh, I mean, we'll be there both days, or at least I will. So come yeah. say hi. Saturday's like the day. So yeah. Anyway, uh, if you guys could pick a console to get the Lego treatment, what would it be? Uh, Sega Genesis Game Hands Boy. Out. Mm. I want a Game Boy. I want like to light up. That'd be cool. <laughs> well, you want to get at Long Island Retro while you're there. Uh, I got a lot of stuff at uh, too many games, so I don't. I'm not really looking for much. If I see some cheap yeah, that's Game Boys, the, maybe I'll get some stuff. But that's the thing, because I went to it wasn't Long Island Retro Gaming last year, but it was something adjacent. Uh, and I'm like looking at all the stuff, and I'm like, I'm hitting a ceiling as to what I actually want to collect anymore. You right. know, like I have most of the things I would want to own. Everything else is just like little odds and ends. I would like to start collecting like, you know, some Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games because I have an analog pocket and I don't like to utilize it. But other than that, like, I don't know. It's like just little, little, little things here and there. Like, I don't, there's not like one particular thing I'm looking for. Well, lately, I haven't been going to these things with uh, uh, like, like something in mind that I want. Uh, mm -hmm. I just find things and buy them. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll walk away with some stuff. I just don't know what I'm going to be looking out for. Yeah. Like when I go to New York Comic Con this year, I have a list of comics I'm looking for, but it's a small list. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm like hitting a ceiling with like what like what I'm looking for in terms of my games and my comic book collection. Did we get approved for New York Comic Con yet? Uh, I haven't gotten an email from them yet. Okay. Uh, Mob X seven. Thank you for the Prime subscription. Uh, I think we're good. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thanks right. for being here. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every Tuesday night at eight PM Eastern, right here on twitch.tv slash wolfden if you can't make the show for any reason at all we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, a youtube.com slash wolfden podcast. So go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us you could do that as well we're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash wolf den podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice but no matter where you get this show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms uh i will be streaming tomorrow i have a video coming out tomorrow Ooh, wednesday will well, do you know how we talked last week about how Nintendo said that uh, this, don't operate the Switch over a certain uh, temperature or else it'll turn yes. itself off? Yes. That temperature happens to be really high. <laughs> if, you, if you stick it in an oven, crank that bitch up to 150 degrees. All right, so that's... That's really high for weather. When you said really high, I assumed you meant like 500. What? Because that's how hot an oven gets. No, okay. All right. Well, yes. If you want, I mean, 500 would also kill it if you want to go there. <laughs> but anyway, I stuck. I actually, Kate says, put it in an air fryer. You'll be happy to know. I fucking <laughs> did. <laughs> It's actually it's like a convection oven that has an air fryer setting. I think it's an air fryer. I'm not. It's, I'm not it, sure. It counts. I'm counting. I it. air I'm fried the it. switch, and the switch 
is totally fine. Wow. So uh, you'll see that tomorrow. Uh, anyway, I'll also stream tomorrow. Uh, right now, go watch Wood. He's playing Cat Game. There you go. And I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Bye.